Good morning, this is the Eager Beaver Show. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, The Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Pepper Master, hot pepper sauces made from farm-fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning and hello, kids, and welcome to season three and episode number 297 of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Cryer Media Network. Yeah. Today, recording day is Wednesday, January 17th, 2024. I have no idea what kind of day it is at the Beaver Lodge because I rolled out of bed 15 minutes ago. (laughs) I'm sorry, that's funny to me. Yep, that's just just the way it is. Actually, I have to add seven to that, so 22 (laughs) minutes ago. (laughs) Ooh, yeah, it was a short night. Um, I'm your host, the Daily uh, Daily Beaver. I'm your host, the Eager Beaver, pronouns he, him, hey, Mr. Beaver, I see I'm still in dream mode. And with me, as always, is my good friend, Mr. Grizzly. We have a nipple for you today, but before we do anything else, let's do the most important thing we do every morning at the Beaver Lodge, is ask Mr. Grizzly, how's your mental health doing today, sir? Well, sir, uh, still up for debate on that one. I slept uh, through the night, went to bed quite early. Slept like literally head hit the pillow and until my alarm went off. And I don't even remember the 5 a.m. Alarm, 5 a.m. alarm going off. I, I don't recall even hearing it. I, I must have silenced it, but I have no recollection of that. And then the 6 alarm, 6 a.m. alarm. See, I'm not awake yet. 6 a.m. alarm went off and I rolled out of bed and got started. But uh, I, I, uh, I'm not awake yet. And I, I think this, this, um, this, this is going to help today because I'm going to need this much coffee to get through. <laughs> Yee. At and least I didn't take melatonin in the hitting. morning. <laughs> <laughs> melatonin in the morning. <laughs> Not a good idea. Our new, our new show. Yes, yes. Hello, welcome to the... <laughs> <laughs> the beaver, the grizz, and the melatonin uh, man. <laughs> melatonin uh, good morning. man, melatonin man. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Welcome to all the kits here who have joined us at the Beaver Lodge this morning. Kit Linda M, Kit Dan, Kit Vim, Kit Elaine, Kit Dan saying, I love pancakes. So does mm. Mr. Beaver. Mm. I've done things for pancakes that I would be ashamed to admit. Mm. I have Kit Tavi G, Kit Jillian, Kit Mike H. Lovely to see you all. Kit Cassie, good morning, damn fam, from a balmy minus 19 <laughs> degrees Celsius. Oh, break out the Speedos. <laughs> speedos. Kit Sean. Pardon? Did you say Speedos? <laughs> I said Speedos. Skit Sean. Woohoo! Kit Sedeka reporting that Mateus missed so much school from being sick. It's like minus 25 out right now, and Mo isn't here to drive him, and it's a 25-minute walk in this weather. I might keep him home again. Mm. Might be a good idea. Kit Hugh, 
Good morning to you, good sir. Who else do we have? Kit James. Hello, my friend. So nice to see you here with us again today. And Kit Kendra. Ah, sending us a little love with a heart. Sending love to the whole damn fam. So lovely to see you. I just saw your email. Running a little late. <laughs> yes. Just a, just, just a wee. Just a wee bit. <laughs> it's all good, man. All right. Uh, so thank you, Kit. Oh, Kit Cranky. Lovely. Yes. So, uh, yes, unreasonably early. I do not know why I do this to myself, but I do. Well, I do know why I do this to myself. It's, it's the love. It's the love. Yeah, yeah. You, you gotta, we give you and gotta, we get. Cranky Canuck, you got to join us on YouTube so you can be a part of the chat here. All the all the wonderful people would love to say hello. Because I see that you're mm. watching on, on the Twitter, or X as they say. But yeah, if you join us on the chat, on uh, on the YouTube, you can uh, you can see everybody else in the chat. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, Kits and Cubs, we have a bit of news for you today. Uh, let's see what we have. I'm glad uh, you do because I'm uh, I'm bereft. You're bereft. I'm bereft of ideas. <laughs> Other than that thing that I wrote in the clip where I saw that uh, Eric Trump seems to think his father is running for president under divinity. Uh, it's a cult, man. <laughs> Sorry. If you are a, a, a believer in a higher power, if you believe in God, if you are a Christian, or even if you don't even have to be Christian, because uh, most of the main religions, most of the biggest, the three big religions, uh, all pray to the same God. They don't all pray to Jesus, but they all pray to the same God, right? So if you believe in God, not everybody does, and I'm not judging those who do or don't. What would make anyone think that Donald Trump would be under divine right? I mean, come on. They just say that the Lord works in mysterious ways and runs with, run, and run with it. Seriously, that's all they do. That's all they do. That explains everything. That gives everybody a free pass to do everything. Oh, yes. The Lord works in mysterious ways. Ah. Did you hear Jordan Peterson well, got? Uh, to, yes, he, yes, he, yes, 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 yes. So let, 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 let's talk about yeah. Let's talk about that. So um, shocker news, because nobody expected this, and nobody told him that this would be the case. But yes, Kermit the Peterson <laughs> lost his case. And now, according to Cryberry BKU, has to be sent to re-education, forcible re-education. All he needs to be sent to is a media, social media course, how to behave online course. Act like an adult. Really? You need to follow the parameters set out and the guidelines set out by the governing body of his profession? Yeah. Um, a course that he wouldn't have to take if he actually behaved like someone who had the intelligence to earn a PhD. But somewhere in around 2017, he decided that it was more profitable to hike up his skirt, work in a street corner for clicks and likes and donations than it was to be a serious man of science. And then one year later in 2018, he decided, ah, this is such a good gig, I don't need to teach anymore. And then somewhere along the way, he got high on his own supply. And all he has to do is go take a little bit of retraining to say, you know what? Maybe you don't want to call people the C word online, and maybe you don't want to counsel people to off the, to unalive themselves yes. and stuff like that. You know, because people in your profession tend not to counsel people to unalive themselves. It's not a very good move on the part of, you know, somebody yeah. who professes to be a person who is supposed to help one in a situation such as that. Yeah. Counsel. S mm. Yeah. And, you know, and particularly not, I mean, no one ever, but particularly not just random strangers that you haven't assessed. Maybe, perhaps. Just not a good idea. Anyway, yes. Yes. He lost. The college in Ontario was correct. 
as everybody with a quarter of a brain tried to let him know. But I guess he had money to burn and he fought it anyway and he made a lawyer rich and and yes, as Kid James says, he'll probably become a lot richer when he publicizes the social media retraining course details. Oh yes, oh, yes absolutely. Because my tweet yesterday, as soon as I found out about it, was something like, and cue martyrdom in mm. three, two. <laughs> because there's a playbook. One of his famous quotes that, that his minions love to, to regurgitate over and over and over and over and over again ad nauseum saying, look, see, 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 there it is, there it is. This is his quote. I'll read it to you and then I'll tell you why it's bullshit. If you don't see that the government enticing and encouraging you to be dependent on basic income as the door opening to a tyranny so pervasive you can hardly imagine it, then you're not thinking. Except here's the problem with that, Jordo. Mr. Peterson, Dr. Peterson, here's the problem with that statement of yours. When AI and robotics take the vast majority of jobs because it's already happening in real time, when truckers' jobs disappear to automated trucks and the people who offload those trucks are eliminated by robots that don't get sick, don't complain, don't take time off, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. How the fuck are people going to feed, clothe, and house themselves if they don't have a job with any income? UBI is not tyranny. UBI is keeping people alive. And a UBI right now gets people off the streets into housing. And what do they do with that money that they earn? The money that we give them, the, the UBI, the universal base, what happens to that money? Well, that's right. It comes right back into the economy because you have to eat, you have to uh, clothe yourself, and you have to keep a roof over your head. Do you think people who get UBI are just sitting on stacks of cash? What the hell is wrong with people? He gets a couple letters behind his name and he earned them. I'm not diminishing that, but he's not smart. He's yeah. not a smart man. He isn't. Yeah. Sure. Yes, he has his PhD. And that takes a lot of work and dedication. Doesn't make you smart. Some of the dumbest people I know are doctors and lawyers. And I've said that before. And I have doctor and lawyer friends who will back me up on that statement. Mm -hmm. We know one. We keep on we keep on holding her up as a reference. Doctor of Laws, allegedly, Lesla Lewis. She's not very smart. Oh, and, and what about Eva Chipyuk? Mm. Yeah. Probably the dumbest mm. lawyer in the country. <sighs> they know how to take tests. That's what it boils down to. Yes. But uh, as Kid James says, Pin Pearson is smart, but also over emotional. They're smart. It's, I guess it's not smart. They're not wise and they lack discernment. Because mm. clearly they're smart. I mean, they're making a ton of money. Well, and he is wealthy beyond his imagination. I saw a, a interview where he talked about how much money he earned on a monthly basis. And I was like, good God, man. I mean, something like half a million dollars a month, I think is what he's earning. If not more than that. Really? Oh yeah. 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 With all of his, all of his socials, all of his channels, all of his books, all of his talks, his talks are the least. I think his, when he has like a you know, when he, he played the CTC here, I think he got something like fifteen to $20,000 for that. So that's not a lot of money. I mean, sure, it's a lot of money for you or I for one night's work, but compared to some of his other stuff where he's earning two, 300000 a month, you know, the speaking engagement is just an extra little bit of spending money. I get that. I, get, I guess that's his pocket change, his walking around money. Jeez. Unbelievable. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's what I mean. They they found their grift. They found the people that are willing to give them the money. Mm -hmm. and, and they're just going with it. And it involves not caring what you look like. But the problem is, is that there's a period of time when you're doing this that you know that you're putting on an act. And then there comes a time where you need to commit the bit, commit to the bit. Mm -hmm. And I'm guessing that then there comes a time afterwards where 
uh, that becomes who you are. If you do it long enough. And not being your authentic self leads to certain things. Leads to health conditions and mental conditions and mental mm -hmm. health conditions. Oh, yes, it does. Which, unfortunately, because we don't wish this on anybody, he suffered from. Mm -hmm. But all these things are predictable. James' statement here that I posted on the screen, Jordan Peterson, Tim Poole, and now Russell Brand, they all found out how profitable the hard right is. It's very true because you got to remember at one point in time, Jordan Peterson wanted to be the first new Democratic uh, Party Prime Minister of Canada. Yep. Tim Poole I... was a left-leaning individual, and Russell Brand was super left-wing at one point. Yep, you can add J.D. Vance to that as well yeah. in the States. Yeah. He was a left winger too. Now he's gone full right because that's where the money is. And I'm sorry, I will uh, go back to house painting before I will ever grift people on the right for money. I can't do it. No, I'm sorry, it's not within me. I'm not greedy. I just want to join the middle class. I could not lie to people. I could not be that inauthentic. Sorry, it's not within me. It'll never happen. Never. Yep. We're going to keep being who we are. And, you know, hopefully we can earn a living at this. And again, yep. neither one of us are trying to get wealthy doing this. I wouldn't mind it. <laughs> I can't lie. I just want to join the middle class, man. It's not the objective. It's not the objective. Man. It's not the objective. For me, you know. The, Mama didn't raise no fool. If they're going to throw money at you, take it. But. Of course. But here, here's, my, here's my take on it. Like, uh, it, something that we've maybe I'm letting the cat out of the bag on this one, but something that we've considered is and looking at doing is setting up a charitable organization so we can help people. Yep. I, once we, I mean, once I hit middle class status, anything else on top, we'll just start using the money to help people. Yes. We're going like to put more money into the show and, and technology to get better at what we do, but we want to be able to help people. That was our goal. We We'd like to employ people someday yes. with good benefits. Yes. It's, it'd, it'd be great if I could worry less about the production aspect of thing and just do this with you and, and somebody else could take care of the production aspect. Yeah. I would like to not have to program into Twitter like for about an hour yeah. a day to watch our episodes so that they circulate you know, once an hour or every hour. Yeah. It's, it, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of, uh, it's a lot of work, right? And, and again, we love doing this, but. Oh God, listen, listen, look at this from James. He was offered a job Whoa. at Breitbart back in 2016. They wanted me just to be a neo-hater of Trudeau, a hundred thousand a year. Thought about it, turned it down because despite not believing in souls, I have one. You have scruples, sir. You have a soul. And yeah, yeah. It's, it's like, I'm sorry. And, and, and here's the other thing too. Spewing vile misinformation and hatred like that all the time not only does that eat you up internally but it also is damaging to our democracy mm -hmm. i tell people mm -hmm. all the time look you hate trudeau that's fine why do you hate him well because of the grocery prices and the price of gasoline and inflation none of that is his responsibility or doing none of it show me where he did that you can't because he didn't neither did stephen harper neither did brian mulrooney Trudeau or Kretchen or any prime minister, they do not control inflation. They do not control the price of gasoline or the price of groceries. They do not control housing. They do no. not control the delivery of health care. They do not control the delivery of homeless shelters. They do not. Now you're talking all provincial responsibilities. So hate the man if you want, but at least get your facts straight. Mm hmm. And Kit James, the fact you did not ex accept that money because you do have a soul is one of the reasons why we're friends. Yes. And I hear you. I understand that. Of course. You wanted the money so bad. Yeah. Who wouldn't take a gig for 100K in 2016? That's about 130K by today's standard. And that's not especially, that long ago. It's only especially for, especially for little to no work. I mean, seriously, getting up. What happened in the world today? Okay. How do I tor torque it to blame Trudeau? Yeah. Let's write about that. It's like, there you go. that's what happened. Oh, here's how we torque it to blame Trudeau. Crank something out in about an hour and a half. 
publish it. There you go. Make a couple of appearances here, there. Have your couple of lines, repeat them. Your stock tropes. Oh, hey, Cassie, uh, way to Super go. Super easy. Jets. Jets are in first place. Sens got spanked last night, 6-4. 7-4, Ooh. sorry, there was an empty netter. Ooh, yep. Yeah, Kitlin M, that's Brian Lilly's job in a nutshell. There you go. Mm-hmm. Easy money. Speaking of people. Yeah. Not uh, that we uh, don't admire. We had Jordan Peterson. You mentioned Donald Trump for a little bit. Um, he did win the Iowa caucuses. So yeah. the U.S. two-year election cycle is on the way. It is the largest victory in an Iowa caucus for a Republican. He won with 51% of the caucus vote. Uh, the big battle was between Ron Death Sentence and Nikki Haley, or in the lady that says that says that racism doesn't really exist but won't go by her actual real first name. Yeah, curious. Mm-hmm. Nikki, because Barack Obama went by his real first name. Yeah, man of integrity. And was able to win. He wasn't a saint, and there's some things he said and did that I really had issues with. But on, on the whole, he was a good man. He is a good man. Yes. So Nimrata, while you try to tell Americans that uh, slavery wasn't really the thing that uh, the Civil War was about. Mm. While saying, you know, it's not a racist country, but you're going to run under Nikki rather than Nimrata. Okay. Sure. You run with that. See how far it gets you. This is interesting. Do I Hold on. Green? Hold on. Is my head. <laughs> no, you don't look green. Uh, maybe it's just my monitor. <laughs> so, uh, yes, uh, DeSantis was desperately trying to make sure he would stay at least second to remain relevant. Somewhere along the way, we lost Chris Christie. Somewhere along the way, we lost Vivek Ramaswamy. And we would like Vivek Ramaswamy to slither back into irrelevance. But it seems that as soon as he lost, he threw his full support behind Donald Trump because he knows he's first in line to be vice president, which is a really stupid job because I don't know if you remember what they tried to do to the last one. Vivek. Yeah. It's like, did you not watch the four years previously where there's absolutely nothing you can do to satisfy the guy unless you absolutely agree with him every single time, put lips to butt, press firmly, and the one time you defy him in all of four years, he sends people to, to, to chant, hang you while they bring nooses and gallows? Mm-hmm. You want that job? Good luck. Excuse my language, but you're a dumb the mucker. <laughs> you won dumb father bucker if you want that job the money's not that good dude because you absolutely are going to have to lower up lawyer up if you take that position and then you got to watch your back every second because once you take that job you can't say no to anything ever <sighs> but it seems that uh, Nikki Haley is actually leading for the primary in New Hampshire. So that will be interesting if she actually pulls it off to see how um, Ronald Rump Roast reacts then. Mm. And speaking of Ronald Rump Roast, it seems that his trial in New York is finally over, as we mentioned, closing arguments. Uh, were held and he wanted to deliver his old closing argument that wasn't a closing argument and you had people all over the states going the judge wouldn't let him have a closing argument it's like no the judge allowed him to have a closing argument he just said it actually has to be a closing argument and it wasn't so the judge played the music and <laughs> sent to commercial and presented the next award so <laughs> so yeah there's a lot of whining down there Back here in Canada, I need to have a little water for this one. The Republican governor of the great state of Etobicoke. <sighs> the self-declared governor of the great state of Etobicoke. And he calls it the state of Etobicoke. Yes, yes. Or Etobicoke. Um, Doug Ford. He's a hash dealer. I know, but it's I tangential. Know, I know. It's a good play on words. I guess. Same neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> Illegal substance. Yeah. They sell yeah. cannabis, but do they sell hash? 
at the dispensaries? I, I don't know. No, I don't think so. No. It's all from the same plant, so. isn't it? You know what? That's a good question. I think it is. I believe it is. I believe it is. There's your morning pour, kids and cubs. Happy goat. Please sponsor us. Anyway, <laughs> shameless today. So it seems okay. that he has not learned. Now you got Cranky Connect going F Duck Ford right away. Yes. Yes. Um, it seems that Doug Ford is still trying to find ways to just fork over money, our money, on our time and on our time and in our name to some buddies. It seems that he has handed out a sole source contract to move some service Ontario kiosks into some Staples stores. Yes. I think there's... 18 of them, yeah, and he, if I'm not mistaken. And he just shut one down um, that was uh, privately owned. Uh, no, 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 no. Mm -mm -mm. No, he didn't shut one down. So 18 staples. Oh, no, he closed a franchise, a, a Service Ontario franchise, and the people are out of work, and he was supposed to transfer them to a staple store, but they're not. They're out of work. I read mm -hmm. about that last night. Yes, but it seems that there is more. There's more to that. Oh, and it's we're going to be that, renovating the staple stores with our money for. Yes, renovating the staple stores. And then um, it seems that there are now two Walmarts in with that deal as well. Both of those uh, American companies. And the one that you are talking about, Mr. Grizzly, according to Richard Southern at City News, the Ford government is stepping in to pay 18 months rent for a privately owned service Ontario outlet. So it seems if he was planning to close it, it seems he might have changed his mind. Uh, okay. So that's news. Highly idea. unusual sources has said this was Staples related, but the government has since confirmed that to not be the case. And of course he promises us that that's the only one. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And according to Richard Southern, again, from City News, who's doing a great job covering this, uh, Mr. Grizzly, he ha took a picture or has a picture from a Staples uh, Service Ontario outlet inside an Oakville Staples. And he says, this is what an already complete Service Ontario outlet looks like inside an Oakville Staples. It's located in between a display of printers and office chairs and at the back of the store, meaning you have to pass all the merchandise. Of course. Taxpayers funded this. There we go. Picture of it. Yeah. yeah good to know yeah. that we paid for that. Yeah. So some people, of course, then came and made the comment, so you want Canada Post to be taken out of shoppers? What's your point? Post offices are often located at the back of stores. Who cares? And Richard Southern came up and said, Staples was given sole source deal for it and an undisclosed amount of taxpayer money for the retrofit while admitting it's looking to monetize it. Why are taxpayers, taxpayers helping the U.S. chain make more money? How is Staples chosen? Why are 11 Service Ontario Service Ontario's being put out of business? Well, he, that's, that's the question. At least the shoppers... Is a Canadian business. And they did have to compete to get that business too. Yes. But it's not just shoppers. They're also in quickie stores as well here in Ottawa. And there are in some rex halls. Yes. So it's not a sole source. They're spread across and it was competition to get them. When it comes to this, this was a sole source for the Sycamore Group, which is what owns Staples. Somebody yesterday tried to say, well, Staples are franchises. No, they're not. They are not franchises. They are owned by the Sycamore Group, which is a large conglomerate that owns a, a, a bunch of retail stores. And the guy who runs Sycamore used to work for Loblaws. It's mm. all, it's all interconnected. It's all Dougie helping out his buddies, all of his donors. And the guy from Sycamore has donated a lot of money to Doug Ford. A lot of money to Doug Ford. Like the maximum up. amount each each uh, cycle is donated. And in several writings. Yes. Yeah. Several writings. I had saved that somewhere, but 
I wish I could draw it up on command, but I, I can't. But there is a list, a whole list. I might be able to find it before the end of the show for you kids. And it seems that for in Welland, where the Service Ontario contractors said that they would be given a job at the Staples that's being built, well, nope. Turns out she's out of a job. Yes. Claudia Savona will be out of a job at the end of the month. The Welland native who lives in Niagara Falls has operated the Service Ontario site at 440 Niagara Street in Welland for the past 18 years. But on November 20th, she was told by the provincial government her contract would end on January 31st. It was a shock, said Savona, who oversees four employees. They gave us 70 days notice and we're not being compensated in any way. We're being treated like crap. For the people. Mm-hmm. Savona was talking about the province's decision to close the Service Ontario location with some caution. She had recently been sent by the province a communique warning her not to speak to the media or in public about the government decision to close the Service Ontario site at the southeast corner of Niagara Street and Tholod Road and relocate it to the staple store at Seaway Mall. Still, despite being, quote, quite concerned about what the province may do to her, she agreed to speak to a reporter about the loss of her Service Ontario operation. Quote, the information is already public, she said. I don't know what they are trying to hide, but I know other operators are fearful about what could happen if they talk. Huh. And as a, and this is not even nice service Ontario kiosk you've got there. It would be a shame if something happened to it because he already yanked them from it. Yeah, it's already been done. And still, if you talk. Yeah. Well, You know when we talk about Doug Ford and abuser talk? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're taking away your staples and uh, yeah. don't don't make me do what I'm going to do if you're going to talk about me for having done it. Don't don't make me do it. Don't force my hand. Well, let, let's take a look at this. Uh, I've got, got a graphic for you here I'll put on the screen from uh, John Litterer. He is uh, the Staples That's guy. The guy. John Letterer served for 30 years at Loblock Companies Limited, where he held a number of leadership roles, including president from 2000 to 2006. He is credited with, among other accomplishments, the introduction of President's Choice Financial and the successful launch of the Real Canadian Superstores in Ontario. He has since held several U.S.-based senior executive positions. In 2017, he joined private equity firm Sycamore Partners as a senior advisor and executive chairman of Staples, Inc., well, 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 well. Where there's smoke, there's always fire. And when it comes to Doug Ford, if you're a good donator, if you'd like to send me money, I will make sure you get millions upon millions upon millions of taxpayer dollars. And all you have to do is just donate to me. That's, that's what I imagine Doug Ford says. That's what I imagine. It's very Trumpish. Oh yeah, it's, it's a quid pro quo, right? Ah, uh, ah. Uh, well, I mean, they were talking about what is it? I think Trump was like millions of dollars anyway. That looks like they're going to go after him because he took that money running his hotels and whatnot. Because his book says, "But I provided a service for that money." Yeah, that's what we're all worried about. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what type of service did you provide for that money, my friend? I'm sure it wasn't early turndown service. I'm going to guess it wasn't. I'm sure it wasn't really exquisite mints on the pillow. Just saying. So, yeah. Um, oh, there we go. I have got it, Mr. Grizzly. Oh, no. that's Those are green dryers. Sorry. I thought I'd found the thing with all those donations. Um, I, I have a feeling that there's going to be another investigation at some point that's going to (laughs) lead to this guy cannot give a contract in any way, shape or form without there being something shady about it. Mm Mm-hmm. There's no reason for this to be sole source. No, none. None whatsoever. 
Why, what, why didn't it go all. to a competition? Why wasn't it put up for, for auction, for bid? Who would like to get a chance at this? Look, I'm still, to be honest with you, I was never happy with what uh, Dalton, well, I never liked Dalton McGinty to begin with because he was not a liberal. He was a conservative in sheep's clothing and, and not a very good conservative at that <laughs> because he wasted so much money. But I was not happy with some of the things he did when he started privatizing certain aspects of government services. And somebody said the other day, well, if you're not happy about Staples, how do you feel about what Dalton McGinty did? And I go, I hated McGinty and I hated what he did. What's your point? That's not a gotcha. It's, it's not a gotcha, okay? <laughs> um, that's a good question, Linda. Was John Letter a Dougie Stag and Doe? He probably was. I'd be surprised Ooh. if he wasn't. Ooh. Indeed, indeed. We could probably find that out. I mean, the information is out there. It's available. I'm sure we, we just have to do a little bit of looking. You, you know what? The, the one surprising thing from yesterday that we should touch on, and we might have to get into a little bit more detail on uh, later in the week. Oh, actually, that well, maybe tomorrow. I don't know. Tomorrow's going to be a little tight because i got to be in the office early. But uh, Rachel Notley. Yes. I was... Kind of surprised at that. Um, really? Well, I, I, well, surprised at the timing of it is what I'm getting at. I, okay. I, I would have thought if she was going to step down, it would have been post-election. Yes. I could see that, yeah. So, I mean, to, to stick around for this, you know, extra bit of time and then step down was, I don't know, it's weird timing as far as I'm concerned. I'm not making a judgment on anybody. I just thought it was strange because ordinarily, if you don't win, that's usually when they go, okay, you know what? It's time to step down. That's usually the case. And, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, that was what, back in, when was the election? June? I believe so, yes. So we're going on, you know, what, seven months now? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe she just wanted to ensure that there was a... Uh good transition that not everybody sort of left. That's possible. And she said that she would. Um, of course, now the great sweepstakes are, who's going to be next? And mm. it seems that there is a lot of uh, internet chatter, uh, at least. Naheed? Not, um, not from the person involved themselves, mm -hmm. but it seems that from the public, yes. there seems to be a draft Max Fawcett. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Well, the Alberta NDP is closer to the uh, Joe Clark progressive conservatives and, and Max is, is an avowed liberal, but he's a progressive. So, you know, I mean, it, the Joe Clark, the Joe Clark progressive conservatives are closer in line to the Justin Trudeau liberals. I mean, they're very, the delineation is razor thin. Mm -hmm. razor thin mm -hmm. so max fawcett yeah that, i could see that i could see that mm -hmm. i don't know if max is interested in that and we've had max on the show we should get him on we should see if we can get him on again to see uh, get get his get his thoughts on this what uh, what does he think he might not want to talk about it of course if he is actually contemplating it but it'd be great to have him on the show well you know max likes facts and a lot of people like people who like facts. Yes. I, I think more people like people who like facts than not. And because of that, uh, like I've, I've stated, you've seen me stated on Twitter, we're growing a community here. A community of, of progressive and centrist Canadians who are tired of the lies, the gaslighting, the misinformation, the disinformation, the unanswered lies. We're tired of people getting away with the lies. So this is why we're building this community to get the truth out to people, get you the facts. And we're not always going to like the facts either, but we're going to give them to you. And we're going to call out the liars for lying because I just, I just cannot stomach it anymore. Indeed. Uh, according to the Telegram Canada, Exclusive. Staples Executive Chairman John Letter donated around $3,000 to various Doug Ford campaigns. The Executive Director of Staples Canada, John Letterer, has been revealed to be a large donor to both the Ford leadership and his campaign for Premier, topping just under $3,000. 
Staples Canada announced this week that they would be participating in a pilot program. Yeah, pilot, call it a pilot program. Mm. With the Ontario government to have service Ontario kiosks and select Staples locations. Simultaneously, several service Ontario locations would be closing down in the foreseeable future. Documents obtained by the Telegram show that Executive Director John Lederer donated 1500 to Doug Ford's leadership race in 2018, then another 1433 during his run for Premier's office in 2019, a race that he won starting his term as Premier of Ontario. So that's that one. But the one that I'm looking for is the other list, where you see that he's donated to certain candidates in certain writings. And then there's a whole list of them. And if you had to add them up, we're talking way more than $3,000. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I just, I mean, I, I looked at the list of donations, and in many cases, it was 1500 1600 1500 1600 uh, I think one was 3000 Like, it was thousands of dollars. Yeah. So, you know, when, when people turn around and say, you know, I've heard people make the comment, it's like, oh, it's like somebody's going to bend over and ruin the reputation for two, three thousand dollars. It's like, con I think this was said with regard to Daniel Smith, with regard to um, changing the amount that yes, the gifts of, of gifts that she could receive in relation to Trudeau's. Uh, Vacations, you know, it's like it was offered an eighty-four thousand dollar trip. No, that's the value. It's the value of the fortified room. Yes, fortified villa. There's a difference. If it had been sold, rented, not sold, but rented, I guess, to out to someone else mm -hmm. for that same period of time with the same services. Well, it's 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 yeah. real simple, but it's not. It's not like here's eighty four thousand no, dollars. It's not the same. It's not even. It's close. how much it would have charged on the market had it gone to someone who was making the reservation. And understand, we're not defending the prime minister on this. We're we're defending the facts. The facts. Now she changed the limits that people can give to her for personal gifts. So you know, it's at a hotel box seats to hockey games, that type of stuff. This is, oh, well, nobody can be bought for that little. It's like, you do realize that certain contract killers do jobs that could send them to jail for the rest of their lives for like 25,000. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. We're talking about a thousand here, a thousand there. 50 times in a year. With probably no consequence, really. Adds up quickly, right? Because no one ever ends up going to jail for this type of stuff for some reason. Mm -hmm. And all you get is a little ethics violation slap on the wrist, if you get one at all. Yeah. Some people actually do go for that cheap. Mm -hmm. Years and years ago, uh, when I, was, I had a DJ gig out of town, once a month, I would go uh, to another town and, and spend the weekend, and I'd work a Friday and Saturday night, and they put me up in a suite. That was comped, and they bought me dinner and drinks, all comped, and they paid me cash to do this gig. I did that for, I think, almost three years. So we could add up the amount of suite money that would have, you know, had they billed it out, 350 a night, so 700 bucks a weekend, 12 times a year, so 36 times, let's add that money up. That would be the value if they actually sold the rooms, but they didn't. They gifted them to me because they had me come from out of town to do the work. And it was my friend who owns the hotel. In this case, Justin Trudeau stayed at his friend's hotel. That was his father's place. He's been staying there since he was a child. Since he was a child. So I think he knows this man quite well. Maybe he looks up to him like a father figure because his father died 24 years ago. Do you remember that? I do. So this individual gifted him the space. Instead of renting it out, you have it for free. 
The value was $84,000, but there was no money exchanging hands. It's not the same as unlimited gifts from donations in the province of Alberta. They're not even the same. One is bribery. <laughs> the other is a family friend providing you with a place to stay at no expense to the taxpayer. It's not a quid pro quo. That was established by the ethics commissioner before he even left. So, again, you might not like the facts, but facts are real. They exist. We don't make them up, and they're not alternative. Facts are facts, period. You lost your mic, sir. Yeah, yeah. It seems that John Letterer is also an active uh, donator in the United States. Of course he is. I found a list there as well. But I'll keep looking for it, uh, Kids and Cubs. I'll keep looking for it because it is extremely impressive. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. All right. What else do we have for you today? Yeah, the, uh, I have to admit to, to you as well, the Rachel Notley thing surprised me because there was no foreshadowing. None. Zero. Whatsoever. I was getting ready to go to bed and then it was like, oh, uh, well, at first, well, I, I saw it on Cryberry, Crybaby Caillou's feed first, so I thought, okay, maybe it's one of those things where he's like saying that she did, right, to try and drum up some stuff, more wishful thinking, stated as fact. And then I saw, I was like, oh, no, she actually did. Okay. That's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. um, the other big news uh, that is out there, again, when we say our premiers are the problem, um, in 2023, there were 4,600 reports of invasive strep A in Canada, which is the highest annual total ever recorded and a jump over 40% over the highest previous recorded total. Um, strep A is usually linked to milder illnesses such as strep throat or scarlet fever, but in some cases, the bacteria invades the bloodstreams and body soft tissues, spreading rapidly, leading to necrotizing fasciitis or toxic shock syndrome. <laughs> otherwise known as flesh-eating disease and sepsis. That is not true. And can lead to even death in as little as 12 to 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Yes. Dr. Leanne McDonald of Public Health Ontario says that there have been more than 200 cases in December alone in Ontario, which is the highest monthly case count in a decade. Between October and December of 2023, there were 48 strep A related, invasive, invasive strep A related deaths including six children. In teens and in kids, cases doubled between November and December in that period. In Quebec, the number of invasive group A streptococcus infections recently spiked 56% compared to the pre-pandemic average for the same time period, according to data collected by the province's Ministry of Health and Social Services. A total of 327 cases were reported between the end of August 2022 and February 11th, 2023, compared to an average of 223 for the same period of 2015 and 2019 before widespread public health measures during the COVID-19 pandemic kept a variety of infectious diseases at bay. The provinces of British Columbia, New Brunswick, Manitoba, and as we mentioned, Quebec, mm -hmm. with Ontario, are the five provinces in which um, cases went up last year uh, pretty quickly. Uh, cases shot up around the world, so this is not unique to us. And uh, multiple provinces are now issuing warnings. Two people died in New Brunswick in 2024 already. And in December, in British Columbia, and officials warned there that there were over 50 cases in people under the age of 20, which is more than twice as many as expected. Um, St. Justine University Health Clinic Center in Montreal, pediatric infectious disease specialist Dr. Fatima Kakar points to a lack of immunity among children with more kids now catching strep recently after avoiding the bacteria over the last few years, coupled with a similar return of influenza in late 2022 after a lengthy lull. Quote, what happens usually happens is a few weeks after having influenza or other virus, that's when the strep might be there in the throat and it becomes invasive. Doctors are recommending, even though ERs are full, if it does seem to be something that would be a case of strep A, to just get to an emergency room without delay. 
Yeah, six Ontario children have died from invasive group A since October. Yep. yep. Um, 4,600 cases confirmed in 2023. Uh, yes. In Winnipeg, an increase of more than 40% over the previous yearly high in 2019. Wow, this is... This yeah. Warning signs of uh, invasive strep A include fever, dizziness, and intense pain. You do need medical attention and antibiotic treatment mm -hmm. for it. So absolutely, please. Uh, if you feel these symptoms, don't think you can write it out. Don't think it's just a cold. Don't say, yeah, oh, I don't want to go to the hospital because it's going to be a long wait. You, you Run, don't walk. Run, don't walk very very important please take care of your health i okay? when i was younger i used to get strep five six times in a winter on average uh, and tonsillitis so uh, we'd go see my doctor and he'd give me more antibiotics and finally he said i'm sending you in for an ent specialist ear nose and throat uh walked into the office sat down he says okay stick out your tongue you put the depressor he goes oh those are coming out we'll get you in next week it was that quick mm -hmm. i was in the hospital and a few days later they got my tonsils out and never had strep after that. No. Mima, as a kid, it was uh, it manifested in um, swelling in my ankles. Mm. Really, really bad, uh, which uh, led, we were actually living in Montreal at the time, and we came uh, to Gatineau to visit my Aunt Lucille, and we were skating, uh, and my ankles swelled up. And that was the second time they had swollen up. The first time they had swollen up, we went to the hospital, and they said it was just growing pains, because mm. it was about five or six. Yeah, I've heard that. Um, and uh and then it, it had abated um and then we for christmas we were skating and it came up again my mom took me to chio and uh it turns out that it was rheumatic fever that had led to a heart murmur so i actually had literally had a hole my friend in my heart my friend had rheumatic fever and, and lost a 100 percent hearing loss in his uh, right ear yeah he had he can't hear anything it's a hundred percent loss so if you see a strep throat those types of symptoms in your child ages five to ten because that's when it most effective uh, most usually affects children then you might be dealing with a case of rheumatic fever because of a case of strep that you may have missed mm. so very very important please 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 take care of yourself watch out for this uh, we know that it's respiratory virus season that there's a lot of stuff going around going on but uh 40% higher than the annual total ever. That's crazy. Huh? Highest annual total ever in Canada. So this is, a, this is a big deal. This is what they call statistically significant, and you need to be watching out for this type of stuff. So please do take good care of your health. And uh, we, we want you around. Mm. We want you around. Um, as predicted... <laughs> New porn name, tonsils. <laughs> Kid James. <laughs> I think hard yard is still my favorite because there's there's levels to that one. <laughs> tonsils McGee. Um, according to Statistics Canada, as predicted, uh, the inflation rate did accelerate to 3.4% in December. So uh, yesterday we were reporting that that's what the expectations were from uh, investment firms and banks based on what they had noticed. And it was indeed the case. Uh, the headline inflation rate ticked up from 3.1% in November, largely because of a sharper decline in gasoline prices a year ago. The headline inflation ticked up because of a decline in gasoline prices? I, huh? <laughs> it doesn't make sense at all. I don't life understand thing. that. Yep. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go to another source because I think there might be some errors in that <laughs> article. There we go. Gasoline prices help drive inflation up to 3.4%. That sounds a little more in line. Mm. <laughs> so StatsCan said the price of gasoline, air travel, passenger vehicles, and rent drove the figure higher in December. Food prices at stores also went up. 4.9% compared to last year, the same rate of increase as November. So while overall inflation went up, there was no additional food inflation um, in the month of December, which is a lot. Well, 
at least to that. Lind, Linda's, Linda's statement here. Doesn't matter why it's Trudeau's fault, which leads me to Theo Modakis' cartoon for this morning in the Toronto Star. <laughs> he likes that one. He has the other one also with like the dinosaurs yes. watching a big, you know, the, the big bang about, to, oh, not the big bang, the, oh my God, my mind today. Mm. A, a meteor about to strike. Trudeau's fault. <laughs> Trudeau's fault. <laughs> Uh, we're seeing a little bit of underlying softness. People are still willing to spend there, but there's just not to the same extent as they might have a year or two ago, said some officials. Uh, the, well, Doug Porter, the chief economist of the Bank of Montreal, um, he claims that the latest consumer index measurements uh, are not a surprise. December is a high consumer month. Oh, yes. With Christmas shopping and all that kind of stuff as well. So, you know, if we're assuming again that people jack the prices up a little bit when they know that people are buying, then and that is you know, somewhat like inevitable, that. right? It just, it just, yeah, that's how it goes. Peak pricing, yeah. While StatsCan says gasoline prices actually fell in December 2023 when compared directly to the previous month, back, sorry, back in December 2022, gasoline prices had comparatively fallen even more. So it's not that gas prices are up over the month of November. But this is a year-over-year -year analysis. So gas prices in December are down from November. Mm -hmm. But compared to December of last year, they're up. Yes. So that, that explains uh, a bit of the hike. But th this is data that's important to know. It's data that's important to know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and then, of course, don't forget turbo cancer. Yes. It's not a thing. Kit PNC bio with his said trademark, beautiful sarcasm. Oh my saying, God. Brilliant sarcasm. Brilliant sarcasm. Trudeau bruise strip at home. <laughs> Tyrant. <laughs> Famously bruise it at home is what he does. Oh man, man, man. Um, so yeah, uh, the Bank of Montreal has written that it believes December 2023's inflation data still points to interest rate cuts mid-2024, while CIBC is predicting the central bank will need to see more progress on some elements of inflation before considering a drop in interest rates. Quote, it's not really quite there yet for where the Bank of Canada would like to see it, said Doug Porter, with regard to the latest inflation rates. Quote, they are worried that inflation pressures might just be smoldering at this point, and it wouldn't take that much to ignite them again. So... Bankers try and be cautious, which is something that bankers are known to do. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Err on the side of caution always. Yes. Now, according to the CBC report, the inflation data comes a day after the Bank of Canada survey showed Canadians are increasingly cutting back on spending while mortgage holders remain confident they can keep up with higher payments when their loans renew. That's some good news. According to the central bank's fourth quarter consumer expectations and business outlook surveys, roughly two thirds of Canadians said they were reducing spending or planning to do so because of their expectations for interest rates and inflation. So some wise planning. <laughs> Tan T. <laughs> F Trudeau, I just stubbed my toe. Yes. It's always <laughs> Trudeau's fault. <laughs> All right. Uh, Mr. Grizzly, do we have a show? We do indeed. I just wanted to share one more uh, clip in regards to Staples. I thought this was an interesting tweet from somebody by the name of at driver fearless, fearless driver. Uh, it says here, Staples were having massive loss from in-store sales. No one was visiting their location. Their office delivery service makes money. However, how did the government make the decision without an open bid bidding process is really troubling. Well, we all know how that happened. I mean. Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, that kind of sort of checks out then. I mean, especially, you know, if, if we're talking, you know, COVID and people working more from home and less at the office, there's probably less office bulk, big purchases of office supplies. So, yeah, I mean, Staples would probably have been a business that would have been pretty hard hit. Oh, yes. By the work at home. They rely on walk-in traffic, right? And if they're not getting it. Yeah, absolutely. So I can see that happening. The Walmarts are a little interesting. Mm. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't. Because yeah. Walmart isn't particularly suffering. No. And again, why it is that um, all these other service Ontario outlets got closed 
But that other one, that one that Doug Ford promises is the only one, is having its rent paid for for 18 months. And here's a specific, a specific irony as well. It's Doug Ford is prepared to do all these retrofits for b- private businesses who could do them themselves and let should. them off as business expenses. Yeah, should, probably more than could. And it appears that he's willing to cover a certain private business owner's rent for 18 months, but he removed rent caps yeah. on construction since 2018 for the people. For the wealthy people. He's for the wealthy people. That's it. The rest of us, we're just... Look, he won't be happy until we all are under his feudal lords. Because, let's face it, um, he, he wants to eliminate unions. He really doesn't want to increase the minimum wage rate. Yeah, my coffee cup does have... I, I get it, Steve, because it's a Sens mug. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> I've had this since uh, 1998, I think. Really? Mm-hmm. 98 or 97. I've had it for a very long time. I, I've got, uh, I have the original Ottawa Senators puck uh, before they were even a franchise. Okay, yes, yes, yes. I remember those. It's on my shelf. Let me see if I can, if I can get it into the, let me see if I can, I think I can get it into frame here. Just a sec here. Let's see. Uh, is it, it's, no, it's just not in the frame. Uh, apologies. I'll have to show it some other time. It is in the photograph, but it's just a little out of frame, so I can't really show it to you. But it's the original Senator's Park. It was a white background. It said Ottawa, and the T's formed together, uh, and there was a green section with a window to form the Peace Tower with the flag. Uh, now, I, I think the Ottawa Alerts, which is the PWHL team, I think that would be a great logo, because right now it just says Ottawa. They don't have any logos for any of the teams yet. I think that if they had Ottawa written in that manner with the Peace Tower with the T's, I think that oh, would be yeah. great. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That would be really great. I concur. <laughs> I can reach behind me and show me. Wait. No, no. <laughs> no, no, no. No, I can't. No, you can't. No, you can't. Were those original pucks, if I remember correctly, were they used for like fundraising at the beginning? Yeah, it was. Uh, well, you could purchase them, and 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 part of the funds was to go towards um, reserving seats if they got a team or something to that effect. I can't remember exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's just see. Yeah, uh, Kit Steve says, "Oh, they're going to have team nicknames." I didn't know that. Yeah, they are. They're going to have uh, nicknames and logos and and all of that kind of stuff. It's just that the teams decided to focus first on making sure that the collective bargaining agreement yes. was settled, so that the things like maternity leave and all that kind of stuff were taken care of, and then they were going to focus on uh, collaterals. Um, and, and this was uh, an owner and teams and players decision that they did together you have to remember that uh, billy jean king was a big part of that yeah who made it such that tennis way back in the 70s mm-hmm. was pay equity between men and women um she's part of this uh, organization as well mm-hmm. that that's bringing this together so this is something that's inherent to the culture of the pwhl so the collective bargaining agreement was really 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 the thing that they wanted to get hammered down and nailed down first, Before they, yeah. which was probably a good idea because I mean, how, especially if we've seen how we've seen they put all Canada. this together. I mean, they did all this in six months. Yes, it's pretty crazy how quickly this all went together. So it's like, yeah, they don't have the logos for the sweaters yet. You know what? Who cares? They got the organization together. They got the schedule together. They got the teams together. They got all the the legalities hammered out. Yeah, that's and they, Brian the, the Brian Burns first, right? Yeah, and Brian Burke is like the head of the players sort of association yes. type of thing. Yeah. yeah I so, mean, yeah. Brian Burke's a good man. And again, He's a, good man. A, a big friend of the Rainbow community. And when you see Brian Burke and you hear him interviewed, you're like, you would think he would be the opposite of that. He, he would... Uh, very much fall into the category of old stock Canadian, except he's American. But you, you know what I'm saying. Except right. He's not. He's not that at all. He don't do not judge that book by its cover because he is not at all what you might think him to be. He's a good man. Yeah, yeah. And uh, 
this little tidbit that I had uh, earmarked, uh, totally unrelated, but I just saw it across my screen and before I lose it again. Um, with the cold snap in Alberta, there's a lot of people, of course, that try to blame. It's the four years in Rachel Notley that caused all this. And they're citing this November 24th, 2016 news article that says Alberta to pay three power companies $1.36 billion to shut their coal fire plants early. The NDP government has mandated all coal fire power plants either cease operations or eliminate all their emissions by 2030 as part of sweeping climate change legislation. And then some people go, oh, the damage caused by Rachel Notley and her troop of terrorists. I don't think that word means what you think it does. <laughs> Struck again. Remember this? I sure miss the days of having a trustworthy and dependable grid. Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Maybe it's time to fire up the coal power generators again. To which somebody responded with some facts. The six coal plants that Notley ordered shut down, here's what she did with them. Three were converted to natural gas. Well. Two are slated to be converted this spring. One is converted to dual fuel. All are up and running right now. Don't let facts get in the way of your bias confirmation echo chamber narrative. <sighs> Exasperated all the goddamn time. All People the damn time. People will believe anything if it feeds the bias. It's, it's, it's anything. disturbing. Anything. It's disturbing. You can look yeah. all this stuff up. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I had somebody the other day text me, do you have this? And I go, no, I have that. And they go, what does that do? I'm like, JFGI. Just friggin' Google it. You're on the Googler, man. Put it in. Don't make me do the research for you. You were, you were on lot. You're asking me what it is that I told you. Google it. <laughs> yeah. I do. It's like, it, people will ask me a question if I don't have an answer or somebody will say something to me and I don't understand it. I'm online. Let me just look it up here and I'll get right back to you. Right. How difficult is that? Yeah. You have to make such an effort to not want to know. It, it, it is an effort days. to not want to know. I will get into a discussion with somebody online and they will say something and I will take the extra 30 or 40 seconds to look it up to make sure what I said was factual. And then I will say, oh, by the way, here's the receipt. Here. It's right here. It's like when somebody yeah. tried to say yesterday, well, Staples are franchise. No, they're not. Here's the receipts. I'm like, you know, the thing is, you just said that on a device that gives you access to the information that counters what you just said. Why didn't you just look it up first? Right? It's all right there. It's right there. <gasps> it's in the palm of your hand. Right. <sighs> Get some cups. That's the end of this episode of the Daily Beaver Morning Show. We hope that you love listening to us because we loved making this for you. Now remember that sharing is caring, so please, please, please tell all your peeps and poops all about us, because that means the world to us. It really does. We think it you. really does. Yes. And if you do not want to miss an episode, well, you don't have to, thanks to the Ray Girl. If you scan that QR code that's right under my chin, that brings you to our pod page site. That's podpage.com slash the true north eager beaver, lowercase letters. I'm just seeing Kid James. Every time I'm looking to the right, for some reason, I see the word porn. <laughs> do, we and it's a, Kid James. do we have a slight obsession here, James? <laughs> <laughs> I think he really wants to be a porn star. Maybe we should change the name of the show to Blue Bald. <laughs> uh, and someone scanned our QR code again. Thank you. Jay, thank you so very much. Um, so yes, podpage.com slash the true north eager beaver, lowercase letters, all in one word with a hyphen. It's just like my eye just goes there. <laughs> no, maybe. <laughs> Call me, I'll help you with that. Uh, no, no, I do not know how to do it. I, I, I'm the last person on the planet who knows how to get into those kind of movies. Uh, geez. Um, so yes, uh, yeah, the Trudeau Eager Beaver hyphen between each one of those words. Oh, <laughs> I misunderstood. I, I thought I misunderstood. I not, not, you don't know how to get somebody into the porn industry. No, no, no. I got no. I absolutely do not. I do. I don't even. 
Yeah. Uh, Only because, right. look, working in nightclubs for as many years as I do, you meet people who work in different walks of life in different industries. I've met producers. Oh, apparently, according to James, I've said it on air, so I have a legally binding contract to make him a star. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'll give it the old college try, my friend. I joked. God, we're going downhill. Who needs rails? Okay. Uh, <laughs> if you would like, uh, speaking of porn, if you would like to smash, uh, <laughs> you can go to our True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated YouTube site. Well. <laughs> and now I feel really bad for saying make like Kit Elaine, given that I just said smash. Yeah. Oh my God, nothing's coming out right. Click the button. Uh, click the button. <laughs> just click the buttons. Just click the buttons. Click the, okay. I mean, click just, the button. Just, just click the buttons. Uh, now I'm just ha I'm I'm half expecting Kit Sean to like put the hashtag spread the beaver again that, to like complete the cycle. Like that. <laughs> that was a good one. Uh, so yes, go to our True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated site and uh, smash with our buttons, like, share, subscribe. We really appreciate it that you do. And if you would like to support us even more. The other QR code right by Mr. Grizzly's head that brings you to our coffee page. That's coffee, ko ficom slash eager beaver, lowercase letters, all in one word. <laughs> oh, you can't see the chat today. Oh, my God. <laughs> We're having a heck of a day here. <laughs> He's losing it, folks. He's gone off track. <laughs> oh, I go clickety, clickety, clickety. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have to understand that my sense of humor is visual. Mm. So when you see things, I I I see the the picture going in my mind like it's a movie. <laughs> it's just, Thomas the train engine? No. It's just, oh man. Oh my god. I love I kill me. I swear to God. My my own imagination is enough to keep, keep me amused. <laughs> it's, oh my word. Uh, I swear some days the kids try to make me giggle on purpose as I'm doing the extras. <laughs> um, so yes, go to our coffee page, coffee, ko-fi.com slash eager beaver, lowercase letters, all in one word. And uh, there you can contribute to the Beaver Lodge Emergency Hydration Fund. <laughs> or I guess the eager beaver. <laughs> Home for wayward wannabe porn stars. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's just for fifteen dollars a day, you can keep James in Stockton thongs. <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> gracious me! <laughs> Cue Sarah McLaughlin. I just in the arms <laughs> of an angel, <laughs> far away from me. You didn't know I could hit those high notes, did you? I did. Oh my god! People hey, Pluto. Me. Okay, we've lost him. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll the credits, and uh, we'll be back in a moment. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Miss V Mysteries from Corbin Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and the Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from farm fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. We are grateful to the Cryer Media Network for its support, Pete Jarvis for our artwork, and Paul Joseph Something for our opening and closing sequence music. You finally stopped okay. laughing. The whole time I was yeah. watching him off camera, he was, he was laughing the whole time. He just stopped just as we came back. I thought oh, it was pretty funny. Man. Sheesh. That kid Cassie like just put a Taylor Swift song in my head for Kid James. I knew you were trouble when you walked in. <laughs> Mr. Grizzly, we did not do your words of wisdom, so please give us your words of wisdom. 
Words of wisdom is kind of a comedic bent today. I saw a clip yesterday that made me laugh hysterically. So I'm just going to go out with some comedy. It was uh, from a spelling bee. And the word was C-word. S-E-A-W-A-R-D. C-word. Spell C-word. So the child goes C U. And no, 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 stop, 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 stop. I thought that was hilarious. That word is stricken from the spell and be list. No more. Forever. Can't use that word. <laughs> well, I mean, S E A W A R D, C word. Yeah. C U. No, 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 no. <laughs> Oh, the panic look on the on the child's face. What what did I do? What did I do? Oh my god. That's like when I was watching the episode of Blackish mm-hmm. one time. And there's a talent show and the youngest kid decides to sing Gold Digger. Oh. But he doesn't sing the radio version. Oh. And then it's like, oh <laughs> the parents have to have a talk with them about what that word means. You can't you can't be saying that, kids. <laughs> so like, whoops. here's a quick uh here's a quick uh thing for saturday for those of you who are unaware um we- welcome to the place where everyone knows your name where everyone's your friend where good times are had by all sit back relax pour yourself a beverage and enjoy our company I know we'll certainly enjoy yours. Welcome to the True North Eager Beaver Pubcast. Once a month, we gather at the Lieutenant's Pump at 361 Elgin Street in downtown Ottawa, Canada's capital city, bringing you joy and happiness all day long. I'm surprised that Kit James didn't post something saying good time is now my part. Because <laughs> it was had by all. Well, uh, well James, <laughs> James, here's a suggestion. Why don't you drive into Ottawa this weekend and uh, join me in the in the pub for the pubcast? No, I can't be there. Well, I know, but it, that, well, that was kind of the you know because you're going to be in from you're going to be remote from Kingston because he's got a, yes. a, a curling tournament. Unfortunately, it does kind of a last yes. second change. So, uh, I mean, Bridget will join me for a bit and. Uh, Oh, you're in Whitby. That's right. You're at your mom's place. Okay. Well, I guess that's out of the question then. But uh, if anybody else wants to join on Saturday, well, I'll, I'll be there. Uh, I'm going to start a little bit earlier than normal. We're going to start at noon-ish, only because I have a family dinner at 6 p.m. So, okay. I, and also there's an NFL playoff game starts at 4.30, which means it'll be way too loud. So I figure we go noon to 4 and, you know. If if uh, anybody wants to, to to come by and sit down and join me on the uh, on the bar top table and have a conversation, we're gonna have. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna send out the invite to a couple of other folks who can join us remotely. As we you know, we like to have people come in remotely and see who else wants to join us. So it'll be a good time. It'll be a good time. Yep. Like as Mr. Grizzly states, um, uh, our curling club is hosting a provincial championships at some point, and we a game on uh, one of our games had to be moved to a Saturday. But uh, they told us with six days' notice that I get to play at 8.45 in the morning yes. on Saturday. Thank you. Which means I cannot make the 10.05 bus into town to be at the podcast in time. So I will be uh, joining in remotely this Saturday. All right, kids and cubs, have a beaverific day. And I will look for that donors list for you. And hopefully I will get it for you tomorrow. I, I want to show you this real quickly and then we'll sign off. Okay. This is, uh, who's your pick for the next leader of Alberta's NDP? Sarah Hoffman, 7%. Uh-huh. Janice Irwin, 29%. Nahid Manchi, 29%. Max Fox, 35%. Uh-huh. And over here, Max says, Max Mentum is building. Today I shall, I shall accept oaths of fealty. <laughs> I'll staff you. Max Don't Mentum. me. I'm in. I assume you're waiting to see the rules or just listening to Albertans for now. I'll only run if the leadership race doesn't interfere with the fantasy baseball season. <laughs> We can make that happen. <laughs> I'm just saying, Max, we can make that happen. <laughs> All right, kids. Have a great day. I'll see you. Love you.